Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage five of Giro d'Italia. Now it's 174 kilometers long, about 110 miles in length. But the big obstacle on today's climb is right there, almost in the center of today's stage. And it's going to be a 20 kilometer climb. Now they have it rated as 4%, but maximum sections at 9%. So you know it's a le legit climb. Yesterday on the Butterfly Effect, when we talked about this stage, I said there's going to be teams that are going to want to light it up on this climb and try to get rid of sprinters. So, for sitting in the team bus with Alpacine Phoenix, their director has to be telling all their riders, if you get any opportunity, we take it on this climb and try to get rid of pure sprinters. And that is the same MO that Intermarche should be thinking about because they have Benny M. Gourmet on their team who has looked solid at the finish of these sprints. And if you can get rid of fast guys, Arnold DeMar, Mark Cavendish, Caleb Ewan, maybe Fernando Gaviria, you got to be happy with that and then you're going to drill it. One thing you got to keep in mind though, when those two teams are talking about these tactics of drilling it on this climb, this climb's going to summit with just over 95 kilometers to go. No one team can hold off sprinter teams back there that have gotten dropped and they're two or three minutes behind the peloton for almost 100K. So in the meeting, the director's saying we're going to need some help. Go all in a little bit at the beginning, but then other teams have to come on the front if we want to keep the sprinters off all the way to the finish of today's stage. Now, when the climb starts, we get into it and it's with 106 kilometers, 107 kilometers to go in today's stage. When we'll see Caleb Ewan and his hand will race. Now, that's a bad thing to be happening because at the front of the field, they've been curb to curb. Alpacine Phoenix played a little bit of trick on everyone and put one rider on the front early in the climb, but then backed him off and then it went curb to curb and a steady pace. Now we're at 106 kilometers to go. Caleb Ewan's hand's going up. I gotta believe, as I'm sitting on the couch, Albacine Phoenix director with his radio in hand has gotta be letting the riders up front know or it's just a strange coincidence because as the hand of Caleb Ewan goes up, shortly after that, it's Albacine Phoenix that arrives at the front of the peloton. We'll see the Albacine Phoenix rider look over his right shoulder. He sees Matthew Vanderpool, his race leader here. Matthew Vanderpool looks left, gives him the nod. And with that nod, the race is on, guys. And we got 106 kilometers to go. Albacine Phoenix is drilling it on the front. First team to come out the back is going to be Mark Cavendish. Mark Cavendish from Quick Step Team. He's got his teammates all wrapped around him. Five guys in front of him along with Cavendish. That's six Quick Step riders at the back. Now, GCN commentators and the coverage, they missed that hand being raised back there from Caleb Ewan because he had already come out the back immediately. In fact, he was probably out the back going back to his car before... Albacine Phoenix even started drilling it. So now Lotto is in trouble because Caleb is further back than Mark Cavendish. Cavendish has got his teammates around him. So again, with six quick step riders there counting Cavendish, you got to believe he's got a solid chance of getting back on. But, but remember, we go back to that meeting in the team bus, the director there, he had to be saying, we need some extra help up front though in order to make this happen. Because 95 kilometers from the summit of the last climb today stage all the way to the finish is a long time for one team to be pulling on the front. They don't even have to wait to the summit of the climb, though, because Bora Hansgrove get on the front still with a few kilometers to go left at today's final climb of the stage. Now, with those two teams working, all of a sudden, the gap back there starts stretching out to Mark Cavendish. Caleb Ewan is finally in the picture. He's got a teammate with him, but not doing a whole lot of damage to the time and always dropping time to the front peloton shortly after those two fast sprinters two favorite sprinters here at Giro d'Italia are dropped now we're going to see Arnold DeMar come out the back but again Arnold DeMar with FDJ has teammates all wrapped around him and losing time but not as fast as Mark Cavendish and Caleb Ewan when they summit at the top of today's final climb here at stage five, it's going to be Leonard Kamna from Bora Hansgrove going over first. That'll be sixth spot for the KOM points. So Leonard Kamna will grab a couple more, one or two more points on the KOM jersey. And up front, that group of five, they went over the top, but only with about a 51-minute second gap on the peloton led behind. Now, let's go back to that summit finish from the peloton. Because on the left side, let me point something out. It's Simon Yates on the left side. Notice how the bike exchange rider knows how to be at the front whenever he has to be with a dead set coming down that you know the teams are going to be drilling at full gas with three big time sprinters out the back. 
Simon Yates bike exchanger in the correct position starting the final descent here on the last climb of stage five. Now enter Marche is on the front drilling it down the descent again like I said in the team meeting all the teams the sprinter teams when they start the sprinter teams that aren't the pure pure favorites here when they want to blow this thing up they're gonna need some help so going up the climb there was help from Bora Hansgrohe now it's enter Marche drilling it on the descent of today's climb and over the top of the summit with Caleb Ewan back there at three four and a half minutes even and then Mark Cavendish at two and a half minutes with his quick step team on the front up front though again enter Marche is not going to be solo because eventually it's going to be Israel Premier Tech hopping on the front and drilling today's stage before the climb even before the descent even finishes here on stage five the group of five up the road they'll get wrapped up with when the peloton comes down to the flat part of the stage behind as the Mark Cavendish squad led back there quick step is drilling as hard as they can they're not doing any damage to the peloton time up front they got some other company but the problem is everybody wrapped in there DSM FDJ Bahrain victorious they all got sprinters in the front peloton so you know quick steps not going to get any help Lotto Sudol is two minutes still behind the quick step train trying to get Mark Cavendish back on so they can't pull the plug and wait for Lotto to come back up otherwise they're going to double their time gap to the peloton up front all of a sudden it's FDJ on the front of the train because Arnold DeMar had found his way back up to the peloton with that you got to start worrying for quick step and Lotto Sudol's Caleb Ewan back there still chasing not making any inroads to the peloton up front Arnold DeMar's team's drilling it as hard as they can. They got help, though, with Israel Premier Tech, who stayed on the front of the peloton here. And Albacine Phoenix is back on the front. With those three teams chasing full gas, it's going to be hard for any one team back there to be able to bring the peloton back. Now, later in the stage, when we start getting about 35, 40 kilometers to go, we're going to see Alpacine Phoenix and Benny M. Gramey have a little discussion here. i got to be wondering if Alpacine Phoenix rider is asking Benny M. Gramey to put one of the intermarch Shea riders on the front that doesn't happen it's still just three teams riding the front until about 15 kilometers to go now it starts getting full gas at the front because everybody in the peloton know there's no chance for Mark Cavendish to get back on. Caleb Ewan and his lot of Sudell teammates are lost back there in the black hole. And up front, they're curb to curb, driving it into the finish here of today's stage five. With 10 kilometers to go, we're going to see all the GC favorite teams on the front. Enios is on the left. Bora Hansgrohe is on the right. Trek Sager Freighter with race leader Juan Lopez is in the middle of the peloton. And they're all surrounded by sprinters teams going curb to curb 10 wide along the streets here with 10 kilometers to go with 5k to go there's a roundabout coming and Kofi just win the battle into the roundabout but let me point out let's go into the film here let me point out just on the left on the curb there's pink jersey Juan Lopez who's in the third fourth position he's on the sidewalk there of the roundabout but he knows he's got to get the 3k to go if he wants to keep this pink jersey here at the Giro d'Italia with four kilometers to go Bora Hansgrohe take over the front with three it's Alpacine Phoenix it's time to get on the front but about four 400, 500 meters later, we're going to see the disorganization from Albacine Phoenix as the rider on the front goes all the way to the right, leaving the teammates on the left. Now with 2.4 kilometers to go, you got one Albacine Phoenix rider in the wind up front and two in the wind on the back left side of the peloton. That is not how you win field sprints here at Giro d'Italia. With two kilometers to go, it's chaos in the back, but it's DSM's Roman Bardet who takes the front for DSM. He's drilling it as hard as he can, but remember, this is not a pure lead out, man. This is a pure GC climber here for DSM. He's throwing in big work out the front, trying to help their sprinters win today's stage five of Giro d'Italia. With one kilometer to go, it's Kofi to Chimalai on the front, and he's got a sprinter, Consoni, on his wheel, sitting second. Now there's a hard left turn coming up with about 800 meters to go. When they exit that turn, it's FDJ on the front. Miles Scott's it. He's on the front, but he's got a gap. Now he starts looking over his shoulder. Wait a minute. What's he looking over his shoulder for? That's right. Matthew Vanderpool, this is the way you do lead outs here. When you're a well-drilled oil team here of doing lead outs for the, your sprinter all the way to the line. Miles Scott's it. We'll see him look over his shoulder not once, not twice, not three times. It must have been four or five times at the front. 
He was perfect. He didn't let off the gas. Miles Scottson had one rider along for company with that little gap to the peloton just behind. We're going to see the sprinter teams start coming up the right, and it's FDJ Arnold DeMar with his teammate in front of him, Ramon Sinkledam. Now, Sinkledam is doing a great job, and Miles Scottson that was up the road with just a little bit of a gap of about 25 meters to the group behind. He has slowed up just enough now that Sinkledam has flown up to the wheel. He's getting a slingshot off his teammate's wheel up front. Miles Scott's it. As he comes up to the wheel, we'll see him slingshot off to the right. Now let me back the film up just a hair, just about 10 meters, maybe even five, because on the left side of the road, it's Matthew Vanderpool. He's going up the left, but now he's crossing wheels with the rider in front of him, and that will take Matthew Vanderpool out of today's sprint finish and give away the Sprint Points jersey after today's stage because Matthew Vanderpool in 600 meters will lose 75 positions on today's stage five of Gerald Italia. Now let's get back to the action because it's hot up front with Sinkledam flying past his teammate Miles Scottson. Now it's 600 meters to go. Sinkleton is on the front. He's got his team sprinter here, Arnold DeMar, sitting second wheel. He'll take Arnold DeMar all the way to about 225 meters to go. And then it's quick step back there, Davi De Ballerini, who starts his sprint. The only problem is on the left side, Israel Premier Tech had already started their sprint. Now 200 meters to go. It's Arnold DeMar that starts his sprint. He jumps full 100% on the pedals. He's got a lead here at the Giro d'Italia. Let me back the film up just a couple more meters again, though, because it was Benny M. Gourmet that tried to shoot up between the fence sing and Phil Bauerhaus, the brain of victorious rider. Now, Benny M. Gourmet didn't make the gap. We'll see him bump shoulders with ba Phil Bauerhaus and then almost go back into the fencing, but the intermarche rider saves it and keeps the bike up on two wheels. Up front now with 175 meters to go. Arnold DeMar is going full gas at 150 meters to go. He's still at the front. 100 meters to go. All of a sudden, it's Fernando Gaviria coming up on the right side, but still has hasn't been able to quite get up to the back wheel there of Arnold Dumar, who's leading a fantastic sprint here with 100 meters to go. Now, coming quickly is going to be the Israel Premier Tech rider, Giacomo Nizzolo, stage winner here at the Giro d'Italia last year. He starts getting a run up on Fernando Gaviria with 10 meters to go. All of a sudden, we see Arnold DeMar toss his bike a little bit premature, but he's got so much of a lead. It's enough to take his first win here of 2022 and realistically his first big win for the last two years since he was here at the Giro d'Italia two years ago and won four stages. FDJ were perfect in the lead out. This is the way you do a lead out train here. Miles Scottson, when he came out of the final corner there, the final left and at 700 meters to go, when we've seen him look back multiple times, remember when you go back to Matthew Vanderpool, when he never looked back for his sprinter, Marichko back on stage three, this is the difference between great sprinters and great lead out guys and great sprinter team versus when you just see a strong, magnificent Matthew Vanderpool doing his own thing at the front of the peloton. Now, second on today's stage, Fernando Gaviria will finish second. Giacomo Nizzolo will be third. Davi De Ballerini, who started his sprint first here at 225 meters to go, will be fourth. And fifth will be the Eritrean, Benny M. Gourmet, who kept his bike upright and just snatched by Phil Bauerhaus at the line to get fifth and keep himself in the hunt for the points jersey here competition throughout the Giro d'Italia. Arnold DeMar, with that stage win, takes the points competition and will lead going into tomorrow's stage six. Now, the general classification didn't have any change in terms of first place because Juan Lopez did a fabulous job of keeping himself out of trouble at the finish of today's stage five. Five. But there is a little bit of change back there. If you go back all the way to about 37 kilometers to go, there was a sprint bonus back there. UAE Team Emirates Almeida was not sleeping. He had a little bit of help from his UAE Team Emirates. They go Ulysses. They did a little fist bump afterwards with a two-second bonus given to Almeida, the Portuguese rider. He moves up a place on the general classification. Other than that, I didn't see much changes aside from that points jersey going to Arnold DeMar. Tomorrow's stage could be much the same. Should be exciting. Now, when you're looking at the sprinter teams, 
When you take dissect today's stage, you got to ask yourself, Caleb Ewan, I don't know what you're going back to the car for back there at one point at 106 kilometers to go on the climb, but I hope it was important because whatever it was, cost you a shot at winning today's stage. And not only did it catch you a shot, a shot at winning today's stage, but the butterfly effect is you had your whole team back there working incredibly hard on today's stage, and now they're probably going to be a little bit tired for tomorrow's stage, along with the quick step train back there of Mark Cavendish. Now, when we look at the favorites for the sprinters, it was exactly as I had talked about before on um, Beyond the Coverage. If you take out the two top sprinters in the world, it leaves it open for the next sprinters to be able to win a stage, and that's what happened on today's stage. Fabulous stage. You got to watch. If you want to go back and watch the film, watch the final, watch the big climb with 20 kilometers from the beginning all the way to the summit of that climb. And then, of course, you want to watch from about 15 kilometers ago because that's when the race really got exciting. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the Butterfly Effect, and I'll see you on the next edition for stage six of tomorrow's Giro d'Italia.